for you now. But we have also seen it ourselves. Men that are not mature, men that do not have the manner that can bring them to maturity. They can be in church for 30 years, but their life will remain babes even in Christ for almost permanently. When people depend on others rather than depending on the word of God, that is not how they will grow. That is not how they will grow. No how. I know how they will grow. In those days, like, like we have been hearing from Prov yesterday and so on and so forth about the testimony of the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. Let me, no matter what, we can change. Our lifestyle may change. Our generation may change. Our behavior may change. But the word of God doesn't change. And God is not going to lower his standard for any other generation. I hope you understand. God is not going to lower his standard for any other generation in life. It happened in the time, listen, it happened in the time of the law. You know, in the dispensation of law, I understand that God even lowered his standard. You, let me tell you, Jesus told the Jews, he said, the reason why why God allowed you to divorce eh? is because of what? Eh? It's because of the hardness of your heart. It seems as if God lowered his standard for the Jews at that time. But because Jesus said in the beginning it wasn't so. In the beginning it wasn't so. So he now declared anyone that divorced his wife and marry another one is committing adultery with her. God in this dispensation of grace is not ready to lower his standard for any generation. It doesn't matter our generation. It would be better for him not to have men in that generation than to lower his standard for that generation. It would be better for him to have no person at all than to say, okay, now that they are on their own, let me lower my standard. God doesn't lower his standard. God of yesterday and today, he ever remains forever. He doesn't lower his standard for anyone. He doesn't lower his standard for, for, for a man because of his position. He doesn't lower his standard for a man because of his rank. He doesn't lower his standard for a man because of his age. He does not lower his standard for any other person in life. What that is impossible for him to do in our generation. Because he has his grace which is sufficient for everybody. Because the Bible says when the apostles began their ministry, they said great was the grace that followed them. That great grace that followed them by both the grace of acts and of life. Is it possible for us to be overwhelmed? I mean, to allow the world to overwhelm our life, to allow this world to move us to and fro, and then we think that we are going to have God lower his standard for us. Except you have the understanding of the scripture and what Bible is saying. That is no how you understand. I mean. You'll be able to do what God wanted to do. This woman, a prostitute, we saw, but fortunately for her, she has experienced this great grace. A person that has experienced the grace of God, his life stands out because the grace is related to lives and to our work. If you look at what the woman did, it is what is lacking in our time. It's commitment. Commitment to following Jesus. In those days, we were so committed to following Jesus. See, Christianity be began to, to, I mean, to show a different face when Pentecostalism in Nigeria began to rise. That's what I discovered. Because even in the 70s, it's, the Pentecostal churches were just a handful of Assembly of God. Uh, this first, Assembly of God, sir, I think. Uh -huh, this assembly, you can't, you can count down on the tip of your finger like this. They were not even five, six. So, but the whole thing are these evangelical churches and the orthodox who, who may not have the spirit of God, but they have the morality. And the character. They have the morality and the character. They may not have the spirit of God. But when Pentecostalism began to take over Nigeria, Christianity began to show a different face. 
You know, in those days, in those days when we pray, you know, this the repetition of prayer like Catholic every day. Uh, you know, sometimes I sit, uh, you say, uh, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Then, surely, good, you know, it's the same thing. If you look at this, the same content. Now, and I asked myself, I said, we are blaming the Catholic for reading their prayers. Eh? Now, is he not even reading the prayer too? Every day, the same thing. Reading out. So, you, you know, you see, the Christianity begin to shift. The uh, God began to create. So, we began to see Christianity in a different way. And I always tell people, I said, I sympathize with the young men that have not seen the early 50s, 60s, and 70s and do not understand what Christianity is all about. Because what we are seeing now is probably a contamination of Christianity. And it is geared toward materialism and, and toward, um, uh, I mean, living in a comfort zone of yours. Anything further of that is impossible. When I was sitting down here yesterday, they sent me a mail. They sent me a mail from U.S. And they said that if somebody, uh, one bishop, he want, that he just arrived in America, and he wanted to marry one American lady. And uh, so they sent me a mail to, to, to investigate. So I now went into the Facebook and picked the name, and I tried to search the Google. Then I got the name, and I saw the ministry. You know, all this prosperity thing. And I gave, uh, and now they now sent me a number, the next phone. I, I called the woman, they sent me a number. And I said, sorry, my name is Gabriel. I'm speaking from this place. I said, I'm from Abuja. And so on. after I explained myself, I said, uh, can I talk to Bishop? Bishop Jack, that is his name. I said, can I talk to Bishop Jack? They said, she said, Bishop Jack, she traveled. I said, can I talk to his wife? So he's the one you are talking to. Meanwhile, he's planning to marry another woman in America and they're investigating. So now the same man made they said, Gabriel, are you sure that he is his wife? I said the woman said I am his wife. And that my husband traveled and we don't even he had never called us for weeks. So how did you know that he traveled? How are you asking? He said he said, stay in what she had never had. Meanwhile, the man he tried, is planning to marry another one. Then they sent me another letter and they said the man said his wife was killed by Boko Haram in Lagos five years ago. I have it in my phone now. The, the man was the, the, and I said, has Boko Haram killed any person who have in Lagos? <laughs> I said, this man is living in Yola. I don't think he's living in Lagos. Boko Haram killed a wife there five years ago. I, I, I had no answer to tell them. I told them immediately, I said, that man, they should, they should help that young woman not to enter this big trouble. The man is married. And first and foremost, he said, liar, there is no book around that has killed a bishop pastor in Lego we ever had. <laughs> uh, excuse me, where are all these things coming from? We, have, we, we, that is, we miss something somewhere. And what we miss is volume two. Volume two, why we do not have a volume two of our life? That is the problem that we are going to face. We are going to pray now. But before we pray, let me tell you, the testimony I gave you, when that thing happened, that, I mean, the, the revival that happened in my communities, more than 30 villages put together. When that revival took place, we didn't know how it started. We thought it started with us. But after some time, the one I introduced us to one white man, who, that is the place in Plateau State they call Gindri. Gindri is a very popular place because he used to have school many, many years back. So... There was this uh, Briton, Briton that had been there for many years. This man had dedicated himself to the Lord. His name is Joy. His name was Joy. He's dead now. Sir, so you know the man. Oh my God. He knows the man. So, sir, so it was, you were a teacher. Oh my God. That was Joy. It was Joy that gathered some students in his class. And as he was, they were praying. That was how the Holy Spirit just packed. And the whole place was taken over. So we and this thing was like a flame of fire. It was just traveling like a like, I mean like like a web. We didn't have the idea, we didn't know the man, we didn't even know Gindri at that time. But the what happened in Gindri came and tortured in our own village, villages. By the time we I met this man, I look at him, I thought he was even Jesus. Very 
very simple. And he told me, he said, Gabriel, I'm going, I will soon die. He was very old at that time. He said, but I told my people, any, nobody should use one penny to bury me. They should give it to those who are preaching the gospel. I've told them they should bury me. I've shown them where to bury me in Gindri. And the man died and they buried him there. He said, don't spend anything to do anything. Use it for the sake of the gospel that brought me to Nigeria. When I attended the man burial, I wish I sat on the grave. You know, I was envy the man grave as if he was a living man. Just a grave of a dead man, I was envy it. I wish I sat on, on joy grave so that even the anointing that he had that could spread all over two steps put together could have also affected my life. But now our Christianity is, you see, it's like they said, when Christianity traveled to Jerusalem, it was persecuted. When Christianity traveled to Greece, it became philosophy. When Christianity traveled to Rome, it became an organization. When Christianity traveled to Europe, it became a culture. And when Christianity traveled to America, it became prosperity. And they say when Christianity traveled to Africa, it became music. <laughs> it became music. Huh? Christianity has never had its first value. All the time it becomes something. Can we be on our feet? I want us to pray that God will affect our life in this meeting. You want to ask God and say, God, give me a volume two of my life. Near the cross, I watch and wait. Hoping, trusting ever Till I read the golden strand Just beyond the leaf In the cross In the cross Oh Lord, in your In your cross, Lord Father, have mercy this moment. 
have mercy upon our life. Oh, Father, have mercy, have mercy. Give me, oh, Father, the volunteer of our life. Jesus, have mercy. Lord, don't abandon us. Don't abandon us. Oh, King of glory, don't abandon us. In the name of Jesus, Father, have mercy. Oh, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Oh, Father, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, King of glory, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Oh, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. Jehovah. That is say that is why you are That is why song again but let me say this thing then we'll finalize with that song again this morning we were i think we were sharing they were talking to the resource person this morning and our brother said something i think he was talking about what happened last night about the rain he said for some time they have been praying for rain in this place farmers have been groaning and asking god for rain but when the rain came like instead but when they were praying for this program they also asked god to make the weather good enough for the program so that there will be no destruction of any sort like it happened last night but there is something that he said he said but the lord said the i will bring rain the rain will come but i will do what i will do that was what touched me. The rain will come, but I will do what I will do. Do you understand that statement? In which case, it doesn't matter what happened. Do you know that in the midst of that terrible rain that we couldn't understand the drama? How many people came out here? <laughs> eh? We only saw emotions. We didn't hear what they said. Eh? They were making noise. We didn't hear what drama people were saying, but we saw emotions. And we were what I was even saying that why can't they stop the drama after the rain? Eh? And the young will not stop the drama. Neither was the leadership ready to stop the drama. And I said, what is wrong? This thing we should pray in rather than eh, the drama that nobody is understanding. Things that were so here when the rain was coming. But they were still having the drama and I said, this is foolishness. <laughs> I said, this is foolishness. Look at them soaking water. Well again. Now, but you see, when there was an altar call, I was shocked. I said, God, help my foolishness. I was, God said, I will bring the rain, but I will do what I can do. That is why you are called Jehovah. 